game's in effect, and Tornado Watch is in effect too. Maybe a postponement for a third time, but sky's clear, rain stopped, and here we go with basketball on your Wednesday between Pebble State and Coastal Alabama North. Bears coming in with an 0-3 mark in conference play, 3-5 and overall. Eagles are 3-0, and 8-3 and overall, and they are winners in seven of seven in a row, including that victory before Christmas against Daytona State, which was the number 11th ranked team in the country. And since then, winners over Eastern Florida, Pensacola. I mean, they have not been beating some Mamby Bambi squads. They have been knocking off some top talent in the ACCC and other parts of the country. Let's take a look at the gentleman who will be on the floor first. For Bevel State, Skyler Heist getting the starting nine. He is a sophomore getting his eighth start of the year. Jalen Stevenson, start number seven. And you've got Jason Griffin, who is putting his third start in. Sean Goss, Donovan Sean Goss, is the only one of the starting five that started every contest prior. And then, of course, you've got Jemias Davis, who is on the floor as a starter for the first time this season. Meanwhile, a little different look for Coastal North as compared to the last time we saw the squad. Seth Jones, who was on the floor then, not to start tonight. Also starting the last time we were here, Kevin Eskridge. He won't start tonight. But you got Nate Braden getting start number five. Lorenzo Caldwell, his 11th. Michael Willis starting for the second time this season. Carl Parker, who really likes to clog up the middle, is getting start number nine. And... Jaquan Pack making his sixth start of the season. So we've got everybody introduced, ready to get basketball underway on a Wednesday as we get action in the ACCC in progress. And the opening tip controlled by Bevel State. Bevel State. 585 points with conference play included, 190 points in conference play. So they are outscoring their opposition out of conference, or at least when out of conference is included. They are not outscoring the competition when you include the conference games. Out of conference, or at least including out of conference games, 585 to 549 in conference, 190 to 203. As it goes to Parker down low, drives his way to the hoop, off the window and we're not enough. Two of police early, that is two of peace, not a two of police. It is two of peace early in this one. I mentioned on Facebook and Twitter, got the battle of a fur and feather. Bears out of Bevel State. Nice feed, inside give to Griffin. And of course with the Eagles, yeah. I mean, I'm not real good with wildlife, but I think indeed they do wear feathers. Eagles do. Off the glass, no good for Braden. And an opportunity for the lead to be expanded. Lost out of bounds, tipped out by the Eagles, Davis and company. Maintaining possession, I mentioned Jemias Davis. Only three games played this year, first start. As it is put in play for the baseline by Sean Goss. Into the corner, out front it goes to Stevenson. And off to Sean Goss. Around the horn, you see the shot clock into single digits. Three pointer in a root, and it drops into the bottom of the barrel for Heiss. And a very early lead of five for Bubble State. Halftime, we're going to be talking with the AD. 
and all of the Coastals. Daniel Head, former baseball coach right here at Coastal North. Now the gentleman who is in charge of all the athletics at Coastal North. Coastal South and East, he'll be our halftime guest. Over to Willis, puts it on the floor with the dribble, backs out. There's a three off the rim for Jaquan Pack. Pack is number three in the conference in three-point percentages. Another three effort from Heiss. This one a little bit strong. Porn grab by Davis. Stevenson with a miss on the three, and it's wrapped up by Parker. Foul committed by Griffin. The freshman picking up his first person. Eagles three minutes into the ball game. In possession of the basketball, Bears with the lead. Into the corner to Willis. Over to Caldwell, drives off the glass rim and drops through. Nice speed, left open for the easy two is Griffin. And that'll go out of bounds. Bears with possession and coach already going to the bench to get Eskridge into the game. Kevin Eskridge, who has started 10 of the previous 11 games, gets onto the floor early. And out will come Micah Willis. You play to Sean Goss. Back out front to Heiss. Already got one three in the game. Eskridge pay, playing him a lot tighter than the defense prior to the three. Just a little short for Sean Goss. Loose ball, Bears still have it. That is tipped out. Saved by the Bears. Heiss. Down low, Davis draws the foul. So Davis will head to the strike. Five point Bears lead. Looking to add more. Four minutes into the ball game. Next outing for Coastal North is on the ninth. They'll head to Wallace Selma. Meanwhile, just a few days from now, a couple of days, Tennessee Valley Prep, the opponent for Bevel State. Pack going to the sidelines. Into the game is Seth Jones for the Eagles. Davis, a 55% free throw shooter, and hits for right about that average. Number to Jones, just into the ball game, feeds into the corner. Brayton fades short. Davis with the board. Screen set by Davis. Sean Goss for two. And the Bears with an eight-point lead. Out front to Brayton, works it to the right side. Eskridge with it. He down to Caldwell. Seth Jones dropping in his first bomb of the game.
Heiss. Davis able to grab the ball that was deflected by an eagle. Battling for two, and it pays off. Seven-point advantage. Seth Jones squaring up over to Parker. Bears haven't substituted yet. Eagles have already been to their bench a couple of times and have a gentleman ready to come in, Greg Kennedy. Sean Goss over to Heiss. Walks it to the top of the key. Over to Heiss with eight on the shot clock. Three on that clock. Off the window and short. Parker with the board. Hands it over to Eskridge. Eskridge to Jones. Jones standing near the timeline. Feeds to Caldwell. Breaks it. Baseline feeds to Parker. And Parker will get fouled. Committing the personal is Jemias Davis. We'll put Christopher Parker at the stripe. So the Eagles taking their first venture to the line. Christopher Parker there, or Carl Parker. Parker a 63% free throw shooter. Averaging eight points per contest on a squad that shoots 71% from the line. That's fourth best in the conference. Two very good shooting teams percentage-wise. Double State three in the conference from the floor. Coastal North six. Double State three from beyond the arc. Coastal North is number two in the conference in three-point percentages. And then from the free throw line, you got the number four and the number seven teams in the conference. Spin by Sean Goss. Back over to Heiss. Nearly taken away by Greg Kennedy, who's in the game. Heiss short on the three. Spinning to the glass without ball in hand is Tavian Good, who has checked into the game. And another foul. This one called on Sean Goss. Puts John Hart at the line. According to stats, John Hart hasn't had a free throw this year, but he has now. If the stats are accurate, he's shooting 100%. And the Eagles have cut it to a four-point game. A one-time eight-point bevel lead. Trimmed to eight with an opportunity to make it, uh, make that from eight down to four and a chance to make it three. Makai Hesley in two for the Eagles. Over to Hart. Hart bringing in baseline. Feeds into the corner. Eskridge. Air ball on the three try. And it'll go out of bounds. Off the Eagles. Davis back into the game. Out will go Griffin.
fed over to Isaiah Daniel into the game. Just able to get past Kennedy with a quick acceleration by Tavian Good. And then Kennedy trying to recover, commits the foul. Good, a 54% free throw shooter, 32 points in a total of eight games played. My math skills are limited, but I think that's about four per contest. Both free throws good. Jones picking up the dribble. There was a little push from the back side. Sean Goss, the guilty party. Maurice Johnson in for the Bears as it is put in play to Kennedy. Jones a bump, and you got a foul charge to good. Back to an eight-point contest. Bears on top. Nice move to the hoop by Jones for two. Over it goes to Good, puts it on the floor. Screen set by Davis into the corner. Johnson with a miss from long range. Tip back, not there. Loose ball picked up by Stevenson, and the whistle is blown. And let's see who's guilty of the foul this time. Well, we know the recipient of the foul, Stevenson, as he heads to the line. Kennedy has it rejected. Davis off Kennedy. Bears basketball, eight-point game. Chance to make it a double-digit lead. Stepping behind the arc. Three ball into the cylinder from Stevenson. And that is prompting an eagle timeout. Bears taking their largest lead of the game. An 11-point lead with 10-32 left in half number one. It's the dreaded appointment. You've put it off long enough. You've run out of excuses, and now you've got to face your fears head on. Fortunately, there's someone there who won't hold your feelings against you. Somebody whose efforts instead will give you your best selfie smile. You'll thank her when it's over. Be somebody. Enroll in the dental assisting program at Coastal Alabama Community College. Inside 11 to play, half number one, double-digit advantage for the visiting Bevel State Bears. 
23-12, their largest lead of the game. Nearly taken away. Bears haven't played a game since mid-December. And they came out chomping at the bit. Last outing for Coastal North in between Christmas and New Year's. Couple of games down in South Florida. Foul committed as Eskridge shoots the three. Eskridge is 71% free throw shooter on this 71% free throw shooting team. Exactly halfway through the half. Coastal North averaging 75 points a game. 73 for the Bears. And at this point, Eagles a little bit behind their typical per game average and Bears right about where they typically would be 10 minutes into a ball game. 10 second violation, Eagles will have possession. Put in play from the other side of the floor, Kelly Cheatham. Belton State coach on one side of the floor, the other Chuck Taylor. Very successful here early in his tenure at Coastal North. Fed over to Jones, thought about the three. Trying to create a little separation between he and Davis. Takes it to the glass off the window, Davis with the board. To the other end of the floor, Kennedy rejects it. Davis with the rebound. To the glass, offensive is charged to John Hart. That's got Chris Smith off the bench coming into the game for the Eagles. So the sidelines will go Hesley. And a whistle. Let's see what happened. And I think it's the guy who just walked onto the floor. Chris Smith called with a foul. So the Bears bring it in from the baseline, nine-point ball game. Largest lead has been 11. In play to Heiss. Briefly to Daniel, then to Johnson. Daniel putting up the three ball. Hart tips it over to Eskridge. Leaning in hard, right hand or no good. Daniel with the board. Over to Heiss. And there was a foul on, I believe, Eskridge and, and Eskridge. And Heiss exchanging a few words. Heiss thinking a team might have been administered or might should have been. Off the rim, Kennedy with the board. Able to get it over to Hart, flicks it to Jones. Loose ball, Kennedy with it. 
And he didn't get into mid court on the line in 10. So it is Bear basketball brought in near the Eagle bench. Don't forget that halftime conversation with Daniel Head, the AD at all the Coastals. About a 15-minute interview, and there's about 15 minutes at halftime, so we'll go straight from basketball into the conversation with Coach Head, talking about a lot of changes that have happened or, and will happen at Coastal North, Coastal South, and East. Johnson going to the stripe. Front end of the one and one missed. And a little hand checking. Too much of it from Johnson. And that will draw the foul on Johnson and put the Eagles at the line shooting a one and one. Johnson to the sidelines, back into the game is Stevenson for the Bears. Davis will go out for Bevel State and checking in is Chance Beavers. Seth Jones able to coax that front end of the one and one over the rim. Aaron Jones free throws. And you got a foul called on Smith. That's going to be two on Smith. Or was it a kick? It was a kick, not a foul. Well, check that. It was a foul, not a kick. And it's a one and one for Heiss. So Heiss going to the stripe to shoot. According to Stans, hasn't missed a free throw. And sometimes I'm not 100% sold on the accuracy of the stats, but we'll assume for the moment, indeed, every game, every trip to the line has been successful for Heiss at the free throw line. Rattles that one in. And no rattling to that one. Nothing but net on free throw number two. Number to Jones. Non-starter, but may have more minutes than anybody else. Parker with a miss, but draws the foul. And Parker making his second trip to the line. Parker in the act of shooting when fouled, so he'll get two. 63% free throw shooter. Trying to make it an eight point game. And Will with a second of two.
fit out front to an open Daniel shoots the three and will rip down the board is Caldwell and stepping in to commit the personal is Heiss. And that will take us to the other end of the floor. Caldwell heading to the line. Successful 91% of the time from the charity stripe. is thrown away. Eagles with a basketball, 7-13. Left to play in the half. Seth Jones left open for the long two. Another pair turnover back into the hands of the Eagles inside seven to play. Half number one, and that is prompting a timeout asked for by the Bears. Eagles turn it into a five-point game. It was 11 not that long ago. Five currently with 6.51 left to play in half number one. Preparing for surgery is like getting ready for the big game. You arrive early. You get your mind right. You make sure every tool is ready and the team has the right equipment. Your patient may never know your name. They may never realize that somebody cared enough to ensure all the little tasks were done right. But that's okay. You do. Be somebody. Enroll in the Surgical Technology Program at Coastal Alabama Community College. Five-point contest inside seven to play half number one. This is as close as the Eagles have been since a 14-10 score. Oh, about 10 minutes ago. And what kind of sent Eagles the wrong direction was a couple of misses at the charity stripe. Had a chance when it was 14-10 to make it a 14-12 game. But a couple of misses, and then Bears began to pull away, eventually by 11. But the Eagles cut it to five with 6.38 to play here in half number one. And a reminder, on Saturday, we are in America's Georgia, the number two ranked team in the country in women's basketball, South Georgia Tech, taking on Georgia Highlands. Big rival game and conference game, too, and we'll have it for you. 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock Central right here. Beavers bringing it into the paint, puts up the jumper. First shot of the game for Beavers. Turns into two. Jones bringing it down low, fires to the other side of the paint. I think Johnson of the Bears tipped it. He did. And it'll be Coastal North basketball in a seven-point contest. Eskridge to put it in play from the opposite side of the floor. Gets it out to Caldwell. 
Jones over to Pack, back into the game, and he'll knock down the long two. Taken away by Jones. The steal and score. And all of a sudden it's a three-point game with still five minutes left in the half. High south front. Pat came out to defend. Caldwell trying to take it away. Commits the foul. Nate Braden coming back into the ball game for the Eagles. <laughs> Meanwhile, heading to the stripe is Beavers. First trip to the line for Beavers in this one. A 75% free throw shooter. And he is shooting the last one and one of the first half for the Bears. Next eagle foul, and you got the double bonus the rest of the way. Both shots good. Beavers out, Daniel in for the Bears. Caldwell putting it in play. Caldwell with the baseline. Move off the window for two. Back to a three-point game. Into the paint goes Griffin off the glass. Parker will wrap it up. Chance to cut the game to one or tie it up. Brayton with a give to Caldwell. Pulls up the strike, gives it to Jones, shoots the three. Eagles taking their first lead. Scratch that, tying the game up. Let's see, 29 each, yeah, tie game. Got to have one more than them to take the lead. Tie game at 29. First time it's been tied since it was two each. Heist with it. Little traffic directing for Daniels. Over to Griffin. Desperation three. Parker with a rebound, and now... A chance for the Eagles to take their first lead. Pack off on the three. It is rebounded by Daniel. Top of the key, Daniel off on the three. Wrapped up by Pack. Caldwell picking up the dribble. To get a down low to Parker, tipped out of bounds by Griffin. Davis coming back into the ball game. Griffin will come out. Braden to put it in play from the baseline. 3-11 left to play in the half. Into the corner to Jones. Caldwell's open out front. Launches the three. Off the glass. Heiss has got it. Fires to the other end of the floor. Knocked away by Caldwell, but committed the foul that put Stevenson on the hardwood. Stevenson will go to the line. What a half of round ball. What a way to begin.
play in the ACCC with the new year. Tied at 29, 17 minutes into the game. Stevenson hitting 67% of his free throws. Trying to make it a two-point lead. Short on the shot. Barely got the rim. And I think we had a lane violation regardless. Jones into the paint. Foul is Hesley. And Hesley with a chance to knot it up or give the lead to the Eagles. Well, best case now is knot it up. Nestle, typically a pretty good free throw shooter, 80%. Trying to make it a 30 all ball game. Misses on a couple. So it's still a one point lead for the Bears. Back over it goes to Braden. Fed to Jones. Bears by three into the paint. Whips a bullet to Caldwell. Who gets the easy two? Over to Beavers who's back in. Stolen away by Braden. Lost on the toss to Pack. Johnson has it taken away. Over into the corner. In and out on the Pack three. Loose ball, another turnover. Caldwell with it. Brings it into the paint. Puts up the one-hander. Eagles with their first lead. It comes about 60 seconds away from halftime. Jones trying to add to the lead. Does with the finger roll. Cross court it goes to Beavers. That is Johnson for three. Wrapped up by Hesley. Over to Jones. Three-point Eagle lead, their biggest of the game, and haven't had it long. Hesley with a miss. There's a foul on the rebound. Pack trying to get it. So, too, was Davis. And Davis will pick up the foul. Fifteen seconds remain. Half number one. Pack one of two. 
Bears hoping to get points out of the final eight seconds of the first half. They will get the three. Pack Hurd coming to the sidelines. Well, I thought he hit a bucket. Maybe he did not. Maybe my eyes deceived me. Off the glass for Braden. He hit a two. So it's not a three, but it was a two. Points added late. Braden, typically a 50-50 free throw shooter. And it's a typical night. I don't think we've done a half yet. Apparently the ball never went out of bounds. Let's see who's got it. That'd be true. I would assume the Eagles have it. They do. So the Bears never stepped out of bounds with it, just threw the inbounds, kind of straddling the baseline. Nope. Now they're going to give it to the Bears. So apparently the ball just never went out of bounds to constitute an inbounds. And that's got Coach Taylor going, wait, I need an explanation. And he seems to be content with the explanation. So the Bears with .3 seconds to lob something to the other end of the floor. They do, but it don't. It doesn't hit Painter. And we have played a half. And after that half, it's a three-point advantage that belongs to the home team, 37-34. We promise you a conversation with 80 of all the Coastals. Daniel Han, it's a 15-minute chat. We got 15 minutes to get it in, so here we go with our conversation with Coach Han. Great to have with us at halftime Daniel Head, who is the athletic director of all the Coastals, Coastal North, Coastal South, Coastal East, Coach Head, how you doing? I'm doing great, Robert. Uh, I'm just, you know, happy to be heading uh, into the, the Christmas holidays here and, and uh, uh, wrapping up the semester with all of our student athletes. And, you know, we're excited about um, the upcoming semester with spring. And, but, you know, looking forward to enjoying a little time off with the family and, and kind of recharging the batteries for, you know, and, and looking for an exciting 2023. By the way, should I continue to refer to you as Coach Han? That's my habit. You know, the former no, baseball coach no, at Coastal No, 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 no. <laughs> the people, people do that all the time. I, I don't coach anymore. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure the kids that I coach, I'm fine with that. But, I mean, it doesn't matter. I've been called a lot worse. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I that that's, uh, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, it's up to the person what they feel comfortable with. But, you know. I, well, I, you, you coach to me, so I'm going to stick with it until you tell me otherwise. All right, hey, have at uh, it. There we go. Um, you know, time has a way, especially the older you get, of seeming like it's been a year or two and it's been a decade. It has now been a while since the consolidation of the campuses of uh, Faulkner, Jeff Davis, uh, Alabama Southern, which all become uh, coastal Alabama. That transitional period, um, What's it been like? Has it been as expected? Are you where you thought these three campuses would be when the consolidation took place? Well, I tell you, it, it has been a uh, it's been a whirlwind. Like, like I said, it, I can't believe. I mean, this all started twenty fifteen. I mean, we are, you know, all of a sudden zoom forward seven years, and and um, you know, we're now in the new coastal Alabama model. You know, and and that's 
Um, it's been, a, oh, there have been a lot of challenges um, uh, through this process, uh, both uh, internally and externally. Um, you know, one of the things that has been the commitment uh, by the college and, and our administration, and we've had multiple levels of administration, is that, you know, that athletic programs are something that is is, is uh, viable and supportive, and, um, you know, we want to protect those. So, um, you know, we, we've had a, uh, it's been a whirlwind of, you know, going from the three different schools to uh, to the coastal northeast south footprint and um, you know we still have some challenges that people still think that it's it's that way and we're all the same we're all the same college and we all support each other and uh, that's where you know the mindset that we we're really trying to move forward with and and trying to we've got some things that we have up you know upcoming that are you know strategically um, probably the final um uh, piece of the puzzle to create a unified coastal Alabama community college, not a, not a Alabama Southern or Jeff Davis or Faulkner. That's all, that's seven years ago. You know, we are coastal Alabama community college. Um, you know, we're looking through the, the, the windshield, not the rear view mirror. And we, we're trying to program things to uh, be able to have long viable, sustainable programs that can be competitive, not only at the, the conference and state level, but also nationally. So, um, We've had a great uh, bit of administrative support. Um, our president currently is, I mean, it's unbelievable the the level of support that we have received uh, by our administration, uh, both, uh, you know, physically just showing up and being there and being present and also uh, fiscally by um, some of the things that we've been doing. Uh, I'm sure we've been around facility wise. We've got a lot of upgrades that, that we've done over the last few years and, and I think uh, the future's bright for Coastal Alabama Community College Athletics. There are changes coming. There are changes coming within the conference itself, but there are changes coming too to Coastal Alabama. Going back to 2015, admittedly now, I knew nothing, uh, you know, of all the the intricate details that went into the process, but I was a little surprised then that uh, all of the athletic programs remained as is at the three different campuses that's about to change right and can you kind of enlighten us to those changes yes i'll be glad to um well one of the things you know the the main uh when when all this consolidated and you you have three independent colleges that that became one the number one priority was um you know the college itself as far as uh making sure that all the different departments and different communities and, and all the different uh, levels of employees were, you know, unifying and everybody understand the model as a college. Um, athletically, it was a little bit different because we had, um, you know, three different athletic programs and, and, and our, you know, administration at the time, you know, their, their commitment wasn't, you know, we're not changing anything right now. Um, we just, it was kind of status quo for, for about five years and, and everything, um, you know, I was the athletic director and baseball coach at Monroeville, uh, coach Wayne Larker was the athletic director and baseball coach and, uh, at Faulkner state and, and Brute and Bay Manette and then coastal South. And then, uh, and David Jones at the time was athletic director in Bruton. And, you know, over those, during that time, they all ran their athletic departments, the way that they always had. And so we were just basically all of our budgets rolled over from what were um, the, you know, from the previous college. And we just kind of were able to maintain, they were just like maintain and do, do things the way you, you have. And we kind of had different levels. Well, that, that administratively is a challenge because you have really now we've become one athletic, you know, we're one college and then you have three different, entities operating separately and there were different procedures and processes and things like that so one of the things that um our administration thought that would be and 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 through that wayne larker retired david jones retired um i was the only guy left standing uh, as far as that had you know it's kind of evolved through that entire process and uh you know our administration thought that it would be um you know a, a good idea to kind of unify that administratively. And, uh, and then that's when they decided to um, hire a, a, you know, a global athletic director, as you would say, that, that manages all three. And uh, I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to, you know, to, to, to get that job. And uh, it's been, a, you know, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of challenge. Um, I, I accepted the job in fall of 
20, guess what? That was right in the throes of COVID. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, what my vision that, you know, and, and, and our, our vision of, of things that we kind of got put on hold for a while. And so inevitably I went, you know, came into this role and it was uh, COVID, 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 COVID for a year. And uh, so that's all we were doing, just trying to maintain. So some of the, some of the, I guess, evaluation of things and, and kind of got put on the back burner. So we got through that and, and then we did some internal evaluations. We brought in a, you know, a consulting firm to, to come in and evaluate um, both, uh, you know, our, stu- you know, they came in and, and spoke with students, faculty, staff, administration, community members. I mean, all the way across the board, alumni um, to, to kind of get a feel for who we were as a college and what we were going to kind of what, what the challenges were. And then internally we, we developed, we had a year long strategic planning process and a lot of the feedback was, Hey, who are we? What is our identity as a, as an athletic brand? Uh, you know, if, if you're in Bruton, you have one feel for it. If you're in you know, Monroeville, you have one feel for it. You know, if you have you're in Bay Manette, you, you kind of also have that. Well, but if you're in Thomasville or you're in Atmore or you're in Fairhope or you're in, you know, these places that don't have athletics, you know, a lot of the faculty staff was like, who, who are we? Like, you know, what, what, what am I? Am I an Eagle? Am I this or what, you know? So, um, you know, it's really unique. And then another example is like, um, last year in the baseball tournament. I mean, we, we, we've had a model of, um, you know, three program, baseball programs, softball programs, all these things playing in the same conference, you know, and trying to beat each other up and we're allocating resources to our, our institution, but they're, they're comp- competing against each other. And so we get to the state tournament and coastal North and South are playing in the final four to go to the, you know, to, to play, to go to the world series. And that's not, I mean, that, that kind of stinks, you know, you got your, you know, who, who do we pull for? I mean, not, not me. I'm, you know, I'm pulling for everybody, but I'm just saying our, our people are like, what, is, what do we do here? And so mm-hmm. those are some things that just, um, you know, th- those are some obstacles that we have, have come across and, and inevitably, um, that along with a little bit of a direction from the conference and and uh, we we are now uh, for 20 years the state of alabama and uh, all the athletic programs have been um mandated to be njca division one the colleges they didn't have a choice it was a conference-wide decision well over the last few years there are a lot of schools there you know alabama and you've been around a lot of the campuses there, there's some campuses that are just they almost look like four-year universities. And then there are some campuses that are, I mean, just a, a blip on the radar, small, rural, you know, not a lot of resources. So a lot of the issues with that, with those kind of the haves and have nots and, and some of the, the smaller schools and smaller campuses, I mean, they just never had any opportunities to be competitive in the big picture. And uh, you, you see the same, over the years, the same teams and, and, you know, going to winning championships and all this. And so these, you know, everybody, it, it's just not fair based on the resources that different people have. So we have an opportunity to now choose, do we want to be NJCA division one or NJCA division two? And that, that all is based on what scholarship, uh, basically the difference is how, how you offer scholarships and things like that. But um, actually currently we're under in, all the schools in Alabama offer division two scholarship, but we're competing at the division one level. So, mm-hmm. um, so what we decided through that is, is we're going to uh, consolidate Bruton and Monroeville athletics into one, and they're going to be the division two model because they're smaller, they're more rural, they're more of a, you know, and, and, and to be, and, and, and can be competitive at the national level in 1998, Jeff Davis, which is now the Bruton, you know, called the Coastal East and Bruton Baseball. I mean, they won the Division Two National Championship. You know, um, that's that could happen again. Um, and and you know, Baymanette, Faulkner State, they've gone to the NJCA World Series in Grand Junction. Uh, Coach Jack Robertson took multiple teams to the national tournament. I mean, so so the Baymanettes, they're going to be Division One. They have on campus, you know, dorms and cafeteria. So there are a lot of resources there that, that maybe put them in a different bracket than, than the, the smaller rural communities. And what we want to do is, you know, inevitably be competitive. And that's kind of part the point of it and uh, be able to unify resources. Now, combining the two into one has, uh, you know, made us make some really tough decisions because we did have 
a baseball program on Bruton and Monroeville and a softball program in Bruton and Monroeville. That was the only duel. So we had to consolidate those programs into one. And so we're keeping uh, baseball in Bruton and softball in Monroeville. Now we have facilities on both and we're going to still play game, you know, play some games over at each campus and, and, and try to understand that. But, but we're also are adding uh, three sports this upcoming year and possibly another uh, with uh on the between those two campuses, possibly another based on the, um, you know, competitive cheer and what goes on there at the NJCA level. So we're looking forward to, you know, I say three sports, but actually six men's and women's cross country, men's and women's golf, both in Bruton and men's and women's tennis in Monroeville. So now I rambled a lot. So, <laughs> no, no, you had a wealth of information and I appreciate it. The unfortunate thing is, of course, we're airing that this in the halftime of a basketball game sword limited. So we're going to have to talk again. Okay. I've got one last question before uh, we wrap up our conversation though. And that is, and I know this may be uh, of all the changes, this may be the simplest, but to the uh, viewer or the fan, maybe it's the most significant. Do you still have Eagles or Warhawks uh, or, or do you become just one mascot? That is something that's being evaluated currently. Uh, we have a, a marketing firm that that, that we are um, right now doing some consulting with, and that is currently being evaluated at this time. Um, you know, there are a lot of different approaches that um, that we're we're looking at, and so um, that is something that that is uh, still on the horizon. Daniel had the AD of all the coastals. Boy, you've you've got a a tough job in this transitional period but have done an exceptional job. And we appreciate the fact that you allow us the chance to watch and stream some great sports on all the coastal campuses. Do I have 30 seconds? You got 30. Take hey, it. Chuck Taylor and Monroeville, Robbie Robertson and Bay Manette, Cedric Yelding and Bay Manette, Mandy Armstrong. We're right in the middle of basketball season. All of them are, are on, on a great track. Um, you know, we, we've got, you know, a lot of success. Chuck has been, they've been named national team of the week this week and, and upset. Uh, and then you were there with the, that yep. exciting game against Daytona state, big win. Uh, Coach Robertson's got a young team and, and his teams get better as the year goes on and they are playing their best basketball. They'll play their best basketball after the break, like they always do. So watch out for them. Coach Yelding's off to a great start. Coach Armstrong is close and really get over the hump. And they've got a, you know, a good nucleus and we're excited about that. Those basketball programs going into the spring semester and how they finish and thanks so much for all you do for all the consoles thank you robert thanks so much to daniel Hand, the ad of all the coastals for the conversation and a lot of great info in regards to how the coastals came to be and all that still lies ahead as we get ready for second half action, about a minute before the half, Eagles took their free, first lead of the contest and enjoy a three-point advantage, matching their largest lead at the half. And we'll have possession of the basketball to begin half number two with an opportunity to expand their largest lead. Biggest first half lead for Bevel State was 11, laid in by Eskridge. So a different look when you call Eskridge's name to the starting lineup in the second half as compared to the first half. Eskridge was not on the floor to begin the ball game. He is in the second half, and he scored the first couple of buckets. So it is Eskridge, Braden Jones, who is another gentleman who did not start the first half but on the floor to begin half number two as well as Caldwell and Parker for the Eagles meanwhile looks like the Bears I'm looking at everybody on the floor yeah same five but start of the game start the second half hi Stevenson Sean Goss Davis and Griffin all there to begin the second half of the Bears. Same five that started the game. Eskridge top of the key over to Jones. Eagles trying to make it eight straight off the glass. 
Tice has got it. It's like they got fired up after getting defeated by a Delgado on the 14th of November. And it just motivated a string of big wins. And eventually, they took on Delgado again and beat him by 21. Fed down low. Eskridge, six points in the second half. Top of the key, Griffin goes over to Heiss. Goes to the charity stripe. Flicks it over to Sean Goss, and Sean Goss with a 10-footer. Again, those eight straight wins, quality opponents. Knocking off Wallace Hansville, Sneed State, Gadsden State, Daytona State, Eastern Florida, and Pensacola State, as well as that win, revenging or avenging that loss to Delgado. So a lot of quality wins for the Eagles over the course of more than a month now. Last loss was the 14th of November. Happen on this floor. Where the Eagles play pretty doggone well. Their home record is three and one. Lone loss was to that Delgado squad here in Monrovia. Meanwhile, Bears on the road are one and two. Well, Heiss, while he was sliding, caused the timeout. And apparently he got it before any walk charge. So with the timeout on the floor, 17.03 left to play in the game, three minutes into the half. Eagles with a six-point lead. We'll take a break, too. You're organized, driven, focused, ready to create the life of luxury in the most beautiful and unique locations, locally and around the world. Discover hospitality management at Coastal Alabama Community College. Back to the basketball inside, 17 to play. Stolen away by Jones. Flicks it to the hoop and gets fouled from the backside by Heiss. So Heiss will pick up a foul. Jones will shoot. Jones is 65% free throw shooter, 16 points a game. Tops for the Eagles did not start tonight. It started nine games prior. This is only the third game of the year that Jones was not in the starting lineup. And he will try to add to the six-point lead. We are very early in the year. As a matter of fact, the bulk of the conference play begins this month. But at the moment, Coastal North atop the standings in the south, a game up on Chat Valley and MMI and a game and a half on top of Bishop State. Of course, they will take on Bishop State soon. Stolen away. Three-pointer missed by Jones. Griffin with it, fouled by Caldwell. What a great set of games, by the way, 
between Christmas and New Year's in America's Georgia. Some of the top teams in the country in women's NJCAA hoop action met there in America's. We had the number one team in the country, Eastern Florida. We had the number two team, Gulf Coast. We had the number four team, South Georgia Tech. We had the number 12 team, Pensacola State. Top team in the ACCC, Shelton State, all on one hardwood. And if you missed it, guess what? It is available on demand. Go to the Jock Jive website, click on the menu bar, top right corner, follow the prompts to South Georgia Tech and pay this itty-bitty subscription fee and watch a lot of great basketball. That saw, by the way, the ACCC rep Shelton State knock off the number one team in the country. So those rankings have changed, and there's a new number one now. It is Gulf Coast number one, South Georgia Tech number two, Parker putting in the two. Drew the foul and has a chance for three. So Parker to shoot. And we are halfway to 100. Definitely a different look in half number two as compared to half number one for the Eagles. Did not look like at one point in the first half that they were going to hit their per game average of 75. Now a good chance with still 15-28 to play and 50 on the board. Parker over to Eskridge. Stolen away. Toss is behind Davis. And it will get out of play and belong to the Eagles. <laughs> and apparently... Daniel Head, the AD at Coastals, is in the house. He just texted me and said, if you weren't afraid of heights, he'd join me. Yeah, we are kind of perched well above the floor. It is not for the faint of heart. Great view of the game, though. Fed to Parker. Over goes to Braden. Standing behind the arc, putting up the three. Eskridge with the board. It is rejected by Davis, but Davis commits the foul. What a great spot to watch the game, though. Here at Coastal North. Matter of fact, most of these venues, there's just not a bad seat in the house. Eskridge, 71% free throw shooter. Well, as a matter of fact, if we didn't have a free throw shooter and we were in a timeout, I've spotted Coach Head would put a camera on it. From the corner, air ball on the highs three. Caldwell's got it. He'll put up a three. Jones short on the shot. Batting around. Loose ball retrieved by Stevenson. Zip into the hoop, Griffin, but could not get it to drop. And let's see who's got possession. Looks like we've got a foul. A push. Let's see who pushed who. Or would that be whom pushed whom? Or it could be who pushed whom. Or maybe whom pushed who. Okay. Yeah. English is um, another one of the topics that I did not fare particularly well with. That's why I run my mouth, right? 
away by Eskridge off a couple of rims. Both sides couldn't get it to drop in. Over goes to Daniel, and he'll pop the three ball. Braden bringing it to the right side, into the paint, shifts to the left hand, no good. Griffin with it. To the glass. Caldwell picking up the foul. That will send Sean Goss to the strike. Well, uh, got an opportunity. Let's see if we can get Daniel head in the picture. He's right there in the entrance of the arena. He knows the right place to get. He's in the monks all the law enforcement. You're right there in the doorway. Daniel Head. AD at all the Coastals. Our halftime guest, and thanks so much to Coach Head for the opportunity to bring you basketball. Every one of the games Eagles or Lady Eagles play here will have. And as a matter of fact, not just round ball. Softball and baseball. And as a matter of fact, both begin this month. I think it is the 27th. LBW Coastal North Baseball, the 28th. Central Alabama Coastal East Softball. All right here on Jock Chai. Eskridge hands it to Jones. Feeds over to Eskridge. And that's Kennedy, actually, who's now in on a walk by Parker. So it was Kennedy that tossed down low to Parker. Parker with a walk. Leaning in, Stevenson. Parker grabs the board. Eskridge to pack, pack off the rim. Sean Goss with it. Looks like he might have taken a little bit of a stutter step. No whistle, three, no good. From Tavion, good. Jones working into the right side. Near the elbow. Down low pack. Off the glass. Foul committed. Pack shooting free throws. Pack a 63% free throw shooter. Excellent with all his percentages. 47 from the floor, 49 from behind the arc. 64 from the line. Foul on Jones. Not shooting. It'll be brought in from the baseline by Daniel. Eight-point contest, Eagles. Nearly eight minutes into the half. Daniel with a miss on the three try. Tipped out of bounds by Good. And it is Eagle basketball. Eskridge. 
Eskridge got out to a roaring start in the half, scoring the first six. Over it goes to Good, gets out of control, and will be charged with the offensive. Ran over Pack. And picks up the foul. So the Eagles back in possession in a 54-46 game. The Eagles trying to win their ninth. Bears trying to win their third in a row. They come in fresh off wins over Stillman's JV and Tennessee Valley Prep. Those two wins came just prior to Christmas. Kennedy for two. Fed over to Heiss, handoff given to Sean Goss. Brings it to the glass, feeds outside of the arc. Heiss for three, and he'll rattle it in. Jones working into the timeline on the right side. Stolen away. Heiss able to pick it off. Brings it to the glass. The one-hander no good. Put back is, though. And is Zachary Lawhorn who is into the game. And lays it in for two. Five-point game. Halfway through the half. That is an Eskridge three. Kennedy with a board. Zips it over to Pack. Pack from one side of the hoop to the other. And lays it in for two. Over to Heiss. Putting up the three. Short. Hesley with the rebound. There is a pack drive, the bucket no good, the foul committed prior to the shot. So pack will go to the line, shooting the one and one. Seven point advantage. 10 has been the largest eagle lead. 11 has been the largest bear lead. Eagles did not get their first lead of the ball game until there was about a minute and five left to play in the first half. Had the meager lead at halftime, and they've been able to maintain the advantage thus far through a little better than 10 minutes of half number two. One more shot for Jaquan Pack. This one missed. Daniel out front over to Heiss. Into the paint. Johnson trying to get it over Kennedy. That's a tall, literally tall order. And you got an injured Johnson on this end of the floor. Braden very slow getting back. He wanted to tend to Johnson. It was kind of torn between heading to the other end of the floor and looking after Johnson. Johnson in some pain. (laughs) 
Maurice Johnson, sophomore. And obviously in some pain. Injury timeout. We'll take a break and come back. Discover pastry baking at Coastal Alabama Community College. Well, Maurice Johnson up. He is over to this. Well, I'm looking to the bench. I do not see him currently at the Bears bench, so he may have left the arena for the moment, but did walk off under his own power. Down it goes to Kennedy, and Kennedy was stumbling when he took the pass and took a step with it. Just kind of got tripped up. Maybe kind of like that, uh, what was it, Georgia-Ohio State game where the Ohio State running back got tripped up by the turf monster. I guess this was the, the gym monster. Slips out on the fingertips of Stevenson. Off the glass and rim for John Hart. Daniel over to Stevenson. Other side of the floor to good into the corner. That is Griffin with it. Turn around for Griffin. Good. So from 10, back down to 8, the eagle advantage. Into the corner of the pack, swings it down low to Kennedy, into the paint, spin move over. Stevenson got the bucket and got fouled. So Kennedy for the and one. Stats suggest... He is a 20% free throw shooter. Rebounded and put back by Pack. Picked off. Hart's got it off the glass. And that will prompt a timeout asked for by the Bears as the Eagles have Extended the lead to their largest yet, a 14-point lead with 7.46 left to play. Think you need a four-year degree to make good money? Think again. Get training in your own backyard. Master electrical and mechanical skills, process controls, hydraulics and pneumatics, and land a job that can take you anywhere. Start your path to a career that pays. 
Discover electrical and instrumentation technology at Coastal Alabama Community College. Driving to the hoop, good, and he'll be fouled by Hesley. Fourth Eagle foul. Good shooting, too. Well, as I mentioned earlier in the ball game, it certainly looked like the Eagles might struggle to get to their per game average of 75, but now eight away with seven and a half minutes to play. It looked like it would be the Bears who would easily hit their per game average of 73, but that might be in jeopardy. Back over it goes to Braden. Hart. And he will draw the foul. Isaiah Daniel picking up the personal. Trying to extend the lead to 14 again. Those shots good from John Hart. Out to set the screen, Davis good with the three. That'll take a chunk off the eagle lead. Still plenty of time left in this one. Eagles looking for their ninth win of the year. Bears looking for their fourth. A foul and now a technical. So a personal on Davis and apparently he said something that Drew the ire of the official, and then I think he teed him up. Yep. So a personal and a technical. Let's see how many fouls that is on Davis. And apparently that's five on Davis. He's out of the game. So Davis will exit the game at the 640 mark. Meanwhile, both free throws good from Hart. And now we'll have Kennedy come to the line. The Hart free throws were on the technical. And Kennedy shooting the free throws after the original foul. Yeah, I was about to say on the previous trip to the line for Kennedy, it lists him as a 20% free throw shooter, but he does not look like a 20% free throw shooter. And he may not have had just that many shots. Look good on both of those. Good. Over Pack, the offensive is charged to Tavion Good. So 
6.25 to play. Over to Kennedy, and Kennedy powers his way for two. Griffin over to Good. Good for three. Short. Still bears ball on this end of the floor. 6-0-1 left to play in the game. Little adjustment on the shot clock. Putting it at 17. Daniel with a miss on the long range shot. Grabbed by Chris Smith. Into the game for the Eagles. Came in the ball game in the first half. Committed a couple of quick fouls and came out. He's back in now. One in the jam and couldn't get it. Give it a good. Good has it. Stripped away, but a foul committed by Smith. So good at the line shooting. 5.36 to play. A 68% shooting free throw squad. Beavers a 70% free throw shooter. And a pounds off of the Eagles. And a timeout on the floor. It is asked for by the Eagles. 5.36 left to play. Eagles with a 16-point lead. Think you need a four-year degree to make good money? Think again. Get training in your own backyard. Master a skill to land a job fast. And start your path to a career that pays. Discover welding at Coastal Alabama Community College. So what are you waiting for? Five thirty-six left to play in this one. A seventy-nine. Make that a seventy-five fifty-nine game. Advantage belonging to the Eagles, looking for their ninth win in a row. All huddled around Chuck Taylor, who has done a stellar job here. Got some pretty good basketball pedigree. And Taylor, and he's brought that expertise here to Monroe, Alabama. Stolen away to the glass. Sean Goss with a miss, but got fouled. Sean Goss, a 76% free throw shooter. Go, 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 go. 
as I mentioned, on a very good shooting free throw squad from Bevel State. Hey, reminder, by the way, that we'd love to have you as a friend and follower on Facebook and Twitter. At Jock Jive on Twitter, Jock Jive Sports on Facebook, scores, schedules, highlights, and so much more. Got a couple of highlights from the first half. Got a Seth Jones and a Lorenzo Caldwell 2 on Facebook and Twitter. And Jock Jive on Twitter, Jock Jive Sports on Facebook. And you can keep up with everything we're doing. And there is a ton of stuff coming up this spring. I want to think in February. I know we've still got plenty of January to go. And got a number of games in January, but February, I believe, like 85 games. So a lot of sports here. And sure, you can go to the website and we'll have the games posted on the media player, but if you want to kind of get an alert on game day, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We're always keeping you updated there on what's coming up. And speaking of coming up, Saturday, back to America's Georgia. We were there between Christmas and New Year's. We're back there on Saturday for a matchup between South Georgia Tech and Georgia Highlands. That's a big ball game, big rival in the GCAA. Fan underneath the Kennedy stripped away. Griffin over to Beavers. And there's contact between Sean Goss and Braden. And that is going to be the seventh eagle foul, putting the Bears into the bonus. Sean Gosh shooting the one and one. Fourteen point game, four minutes thirty five seconds left to play. In today's world of basketball, that's not a game that's over. Things can change and change quickly. Heck, even in football, you can score. 16 in four minutes. That's what Tulane did against USC, right? If they can do it in football, we sure can do it in basketball. So the Bears thinking they're not out of it. Eagles hoping to maintain and expand on the lead. Put in play to Jones. Screen set by Kennedy. Over it goes to Smith. Short on the shot, rebounded by Hart. He'll put it up and in. Fed over to Heiss. Kicks it out to Sean Goss. Launches the three and hits it. Kennedy. And he will get fouled by Stevenson. see what the discussion is about. I think it may have been as to whether it was a one-and-one one or a two-shot foul. Eagles are into the double bonus as the Bears have committed 10-plus. So Kennedy will get two and makes misses the first and will have a chance with shot number two, 347 left to play. 
Short of the shot, rebounded by the Eagles. Sean Goss with it. Sean Goss with a miss. Stevenson, and he'll get fouled. Well, if we had stats, I have a feeling there would be a ton of marks under the PF category, the personal fouls. Stevenson, a 66% free throw shooter. 42 points in seven games. I think I spoke earlier about my limited math skills, but I'm thinking that's right at six a game. Underneath, off the glass, Caldwell. 80 68, 322 to go. Stolen away by Hard. Hard fouled. And Griffin committing the personal. And apparently that may be it for Griffin. So Davis checked out of the game with personal fouls at the 640 mark. Griffin out of the game at the 318 mark. And let's see who will check in. Looks like it is going to be Tavian Good. John Hart at the stripe. Played in one game prior to tonight, scored nine on that night and did not make a trip to the charity stripe. Well, that per game average for the Eagles going to climb. Currently seven above what they typically do on a given night. And you got an Eskridge foul. So Eskridge will commit the foul. Sean Goss will go to the strike. Three oh seven to play. Still a thirteen point game. That's not an insurmountable lead. I've mentioned many times in those games get down inside three with 12 points or so separating the two about a matchup between Colin and Jones in women's basketball it was a 12 point game with a minute 24 to play Colin down and again long story short they tied it up sent it to OT and won it in overtime there's the offensive on Chris Smith By the way, I would be remiss not to mention Damar Hamlin. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family of Damar. We are hoping that he makes a speedy recovery and does what almost seems so improbable now, but one day we'll see him on the football field again playing for the Buffalo Bills. What a scary moment on Monday night. Shangas with a miss. 
Rebounded by Jones. Hart with the spin move over to Parker, who's back into the game. Shot no good, tipped around. Parker's got the height advantage. Eventually, Eagles wind up with it once more. Over to Eskridge. This is from outside of the paint. And that'll be off Hart and belong to the Bears. So Hart, a delay of game, I believe. Chuck Taylor's going to get him out of the game and put Jaquan Pack back in. Handed over to Heiss, given to Shan Goss. And you got an offensive somewhere along the way. Let's see who committed it. That is going to be Tavion Good picking up the foul. Illegal screen. And I think that may be it for Good. So Good out of the game with a minute 58 to play. Over goes to Pack. Sent to the other side of the floor in Eskridge. Back to Parker at the elbow. Down to Caldwell. Well, there have been a lot of them in this one. Personals. And it looks like a fan favorite is about to get into the ball game. That is Nayland Kidd. So Naylon will come into the game. And Pack will come out. Lorenzo Caldwell, the 92% free throw shooter at the line with a minute 40 left to play. I think it is probable that Eagles are going to win their ninth in a row. I make that eighth in a row, their ninth of the year. Fed over into the corner to Heiss. Brings it to just outside of the paint and drops in the two. And there's a walk by Jones. Tried to get rid of it before taking a step, but took the step before getting rid of it. Jones pleading his case with the official. Tipped out of bounds by Jones. Bears still have it. Bears two days from now. Back at their house taking on Tennessee Valley Prep. A team that they knocked off just prior to Christmas. 98-55. That 98 was their highest point total of the season. Meanwhile, a road trip next for the Eagles on the 9th. Traveling to Selma to take on the Patriots. Off balance, Heist three, got fouled by Parker. Bailed out. Hearing somebody barking out numbers, thought the clock, the shot clock was expiring. 
took the shot well in advance of the expiration of that clock. And Parker committed the foul, and Heiss will go to the strike. Heiss one of two, he'll get three. Chance to make it a 10-point game with 63 seconds left to play. Jones over to Eskridge. Caldwell's got it. And he put a little too much on that one. Toss winds up heading down the hallway. Michael Willis coming back into the ball game. Colby Barnett, another fan favorite apparently, checking in. Over to Stevenson. Sean Goss. Pull up jumper. Heiss off the window. And with 28 seconds left to play, Bears take a timeout. And after they tack on the additional points, actually an eight point game. What's up, y'all? Here at Coastal Alabama, about to go and get this leg day started. Let's get it. We're here again after it today. Here. Hey. Oh. hey, let's go, baby. Let's ride. Yes, sir. Well, they should have the game in hand with 28 seconds to play in an eight-point ball game, but you never know. Three-possession contest. Bears, let's see if they get a steal on the inbounds. If not, do they foul immediately? And they do. That was the instructions from the sidelines. Lahorn will commit the foul, and... Seth Jones will shoot. Couple of free throws from Seth Jones. Non-starter tonight for only the third time, but he's certainly been productive when on the floor. Trying to extend it to a double-digit lead. It will stay at nine and single digits. Rebounded by Jones, and I think now the instruction is don't foul. This one's over. Time runs out, and there's your horn to indicate that we have wrapped up play on a Wednesday night, and finally a game that, as I mentioned, had been scheduled twice before, but couldn't be played because inclement weather kept the Bears at home. Comes to an end. And Coastal North will win their eighth straight now, nine and three on the year. Bevel State snapping a two-game win streak. They will fall to three and six. Bevel State at home against Tennessee Valley Prep on Friday night. For Coastal North, it's the 9th of January when they will travel to Wallace Selma to take on the Patriots. 
So this one is over, 85-76. Coastal North wins it. Thanks so much for watching our coverage. We'll see you on Saturday in Americus when the second-ranked Lady Jets of South Georgia Tech take on Georgia Highlands. For all the Coastals, specifically the Eagles, and for all of us at Jock Chive, Robert Williamson saying so long, and thanks for watching.